Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanine. So we're going to begin here with uh, this article from you.today. I hope you're all having a good day out there. All right. It's titled Ripple Case Decision More Crucial Than Ever. All right. So we're going to begin here with this section. It's titled Ripple Lawsuit Decision More Significant Than Ever. Crypto Lawyer Says Why. Of course, they're talking about the esteemed John Deaton here. So it says John Deaton, XRP Holders attorney and founder of Crypto Law, has recently tweeted that Judge Torres's ruling in the Ripple lawsuit is becoming potentially more significant as each day passes. I agree with that. So he then justified his answer by giving two possible outcomes of the case. OK, he's trying to remain balanced here. If the ruling brings good judgment for XRP, it will be wonderful news for other coins. Well, mostly the bank coins utility based coins look at the arguments that they're making there is a huge swath of crypto that has no utility whatsoever um and yet they're they're moving major capital you know we know who those types of we know what those types of projects are um the sec is going to have a field day with them once they get the big players out out of the way uh but let's continue on here it says if the outcome is negative for xrp the status quo will be maintained and the SEC's enforcement agenda might further accelerate. Well, I'll tell you one thing, a few things. I'll put a few things out there that's on my mind when I hear that. Number one, XRP can still thrive outside the United States where most of their business is. The United States will take a massive blow. Not only will they lose a massive amount of jobs and they will fall behind in the technologies. And please don't talk about Fed now, which is not distributed ledger technologies. This is why they're trying to make so many integrations with distributed ledger technologies right and on top of that you have to pay a 25 dollar monthly fee just to use fed now 25 dollar monthly fee and i think that's just for the first year correct me if i'm wrong right that price could go up um who wants to be involved with a system like that this is why there's still so much room for the bank coins to dominate i mean nothing has changed as of right now correct me if i'm wrong and look up that monthly fee and that's not the only fee there's other fees that's just the big fee so, I mean, they're moving from a system where they have to pay to pay to play, so to speak, into another system where they have to pay to play again, where we're offering systems that cost almost nothing. We will dominate them, whether there's blockchain integration or not. There's going to be outright domination, in my humble opinion. This is why you still have all these big entities talking about what XRP. I have missed this article. I have an article we're going to discuss probably chapter four here. But it's about the U.S. Faster Payment Council. Now, I missed this one, but they're still talking about XRP and how great it is. But we'll get to that just as proof of what I'm saying. They wouldn't be talking on the Faster Payments Council about how great XRP is if the system that they have now is so great and so dominant and, you know, uh, um, helps them catch up with with competition and technology. Absolutely not. No, they haven't. All they have is Zelle and Cash App on steroids. That's all Fed now is. But let's continue on here. Um, so that's one thing that comes to mind here. The next thing that comes to mind is if the United, listen, I said this before months ago, if the United States does not get their act together, and let me tell you something is already begun. A lot of big money who likes to play will leave the United States. Mark my words. It's already been happening. A lot of people that have good capital have over the last two years. Been opening their businesses elsewhere, buying farmland elsewhere, um, buying big properties and homes elsewhere. And a lot more will do the same if they're going to continue to make it very difficult for individuals to make capital the way that they would like to in legit ways. See, now, if it wasn't legit, all right, understandable. But these are legit methods of building companies, legit technology. Legit ways to make money. Now, if they're going to go against that, then what do you call that? Except for corruption. People are going to leave. It's very easy to get the proper visa, right? Long-term visa in other countries and move there and, and thrive and live very, very well. I'm just putting it out there. So that's one thing that's going to happen. If, if you believe people are going to let any of these regulations stand in the way of their capital, absolutely not. And once again, XRP and the rest of the bank coins will probably, it's not guaranteed. There's no guarantees in life and it's not financial advice, but will still run wild outside the United States where they've built all these other corridors, right? 
and, and yes, the SEC will have hurt a lot of individuals who can't do such a thing. But those who have the, the, the ability to do so, yeah, they're not going to pass upon that generational wealth. You're still going to be able to probably make riches, not financial advice. It's just my opinion. Just my opinion. No guarantees. All right. But yeah, you're probably still going to be making disgusting gains. You know, you just won't be able to play the way that you will want to in the United States. And it's like, okay, well, if you're not going to let us, or right, we're going to go somewhere else. Why not? So that's why I think when that, when they, when they say something like that, like, oh, if, um, if there's a negative outcome for XRP, then it's going to be felt, it's going to be felt in a widespread way. Does Deaton's tweet follow as a reply to Scott Melker, Wolf of All Streets on Twitter? Okay, we're going to leave that off there. Once again, that was on you dot today. So now let's move on here. So now this, uh, this article is from CryptoNews.net. And let's scroll up here to see the title. The title is XRP absorbs investors cash as crypto fund flows skyrocket with one hundred and twenty four million dollar surge. Did you see that video I released yesterday? I believe it was either that one or the members only video. I can't remember which one. I had an article in there that was talking about there was a reputable individual uh, talking about how when the markets go down, the big companies are buying little by little. So it's been confirmed. Then I, wasn't I just talking about that? Maybe like two, three videos back. Then we had an article confirm it. I told you this is what they're doing. They don't have to buy huge amounts to tip people off that, hey, big companies are buying. No, they buy little by little. And they probably don't buy. They probably buy it by proxy so that people don't know. So they don't cause FOMO. Why would they want to do that? I think that's logical. Big companies and, and individuals, big money individuals, although people may not like may not like the deeds that they do, right? Because they do some very bad things, but they are very strategic. Never underestimate their, their strategy and their intelligence. They're not dummies. But anyway, let's continue on here. It says, in a remarkable week for the crypto market, digital asset investment products surged with a staggering $125 million influx, the main magnet of investors' attention without a doubt was Bitcoin, capturing an impressive inflow of $123. However, it was XRP that stood out as the star performer, receiving over $400,000 in inflows, continuing its positive trajectory. According to the recent weekly uh, report from CoinShares, XRP exchange traded products experienced remarkable performance with $2.8 million flowing Flowing in during June alone, outperforming any other altcoin. Since the beginning of 2023, XRP products have amassed an impressive $6 million in fund flows. I don't expect anything less than that. Uh, you know, in the future, I expect to see much, much more, but we'll keep our eye on things. We'll adjust accordingly as, as uh, time goes by. But there are big things on the, on the horizon for XRP, and this is nothing compared to what is to come. There's no way. It says, why would traditional investors bet on XRP? It says, this special attitude towards XRP may be attributed to two primary factors. The first is the close association between the coin and Ripple, where the latter actively employs it in business operations. With Ripple's constant expansion and partnerships across traditional industries, Many investors see XRP as an excellent vehicle to gain exposure to Ripple's growth. The belief, well, well, mostly infrastructures, once they deploy infrastructures, is up to the banks in how they use XRP, whether they use payment channels, uh, they're, whether they're using it for wholesale, wholesale uh, uh, liquidity, wholesale uh, as a wholesale bridge asset, if they're building their CBDCs on it. I mean, there's so many different ways that they can use it. It's up to them once infrastructure is deployed ripple is really just deploying infrastructure sure they reallocate xrp here and there just to grease the wheels but you the uh, uh the banks can always buy xrp just on open market if they really really wanted to i mean and i think a lot of that's going to happen i think they're going to buy up all the xrp you want to be real about it once uh as all the, the the top people are saying once there's regulatory clarity or, or a, a positive outcome to the sec case really that's that's regulatory clarity for XRP. Positive outcome to the SEC case. 
And then I believe they're going to buy up all the XRP, not all at once, not instantly. Once the um, case is over, it could take a little bit of time. Uh, but I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of XRP out there. Why would they leave it out there? I just don't I just don't see that happen. I see over time XRP may become very rare and I could be wrong. I definitely could be. But I think it's going to be rare. And uh, I think that's going to lend to the price being boosted, <laughs> raised, raised, raised. And um, I think it's going to be a beautiful thing that most people do not see coming. I think a lot of people underestimate the power that XRP could possibly uh, and of which XRP could take off with. So it says here, the second reason is the ongoing legal proceedings between Ripple and the SEC now going into its third year. Despite the prolonged uncertainty, various experts estimate that a final solution may be on the horizon. We agree with that. I think all the lawyers have said that. The former individual from the SEC has said the same. They said days to weeks, but we'll see. We'll see how it all works out. So now let's move on to another article here. So this article here is from U.Today and it's titled Pro Ripple Lawyer says SEC created uncertainty with Dash XRP security stat status. So let's see what they're talking about here. Bill Morgan, a legal expert and XRP enthusiast, has once again criticized the SEC's approach to digital asset regulation. In a tweet, Morgan highlights the years of uncertainty created by the SEC as it failed to provide regulatory clarity on crypto assets, including Dash and XRP. Let me pause right there. So what should be investigated, in my humble opinion, and looked into, and we've discussed this plenty of time, times before, is that if the SEC had all of these different connections with Ethereum, obviously they had a line directly to Vitalik. If they're asking his opinion on assets that they're supposed to regulate and, uh, and, and according to them, everything is clear cut, even though they have to question on how they're going to issue regulations, which obviously shows that it's not clear cut. So they have this relationship with Vitalik. Then, they, then on top of that, they have another relationship. Obviously, that was very deep with Sam Bankman freed of FTX. Right. I mean, so now that you're seeing the competition is being uh, sort of suppressed stifled injured that it should be investigated that that's a a type of market manipulation obviously the prices of all the di different competition dramatically plummeted dramatically but the individuals that they had relationship relationships with ethereum not touch uh ftx uh you know what let's go after coinbase binance and they never did anything about ftx so this is what i'm saying so that's something that I believe uh, is where light should be shed. Is like, are, is, is there actually something going on to, to remedy the situation? There's a lot of talk going on. And sure, they have some bills in, in Congress. It was either Congress or the Senate, someone. I don't know. One of these politicians, a few of them. Uh, but is it going anywhere? Right now, I think the biggest problem across many industries, especially in the United States, is there's no... There are no remedies at this particular time, and there should be. There's too much talk, too little action, too many friends. There's really, at this point, there's really not two sides, right? This duality, this dichotomy that people believe exists, it really isn't. There's too many handshakes, too many uh, high-paid dinners that they're having together. And it's like, how, how is anyone to expect people to hold their, their friends and business partners and associates accountable that's a huge problem so now that's something to look into but eh, you know we'll leave that there so as uh brought to light by bitrex's recent filing the sec publicly ex expressed its view that dash might be considered a, a security okay they go into a little bit of that we understand all of these things morgan noted the fact that ripple was sued eight years after selling xrp we know all of that yeah so once again more actions less talking um, I think that if this is going to be put out there, and I know it's going to be difficult, you're going to need to get on a, a major, major platform. Don't get me wrong. You, you today is a big platform, but you're going to have to spread this message to major, major platforms, which would take major capital. I know. Um, and on top of that, the, the people that we're trying to go against, they control most of the big media. This article here is from the crypto and it is titled. USFP Council spotlights Ripple solution for cross-border payments. 
All right. So now I wanted to cover this one because I didn't I never I didn't see this when it came out. All right. So I'm a little bit behind on this, but nevertheless, it is potent information. And maybe some of you haven't seen this It's from July the 1st. So not that long ago. And it goes as such. The U.S. Faster Payment Council acknowledges Ripple cross border payment solution in enhancing efficiency and reducing costs in the industry through the use of XRP. Then we scroll down here. It says, in a significant development, it has been revealed that the U.S. Faster Payment Council highlighted the capabilities of Ripple and XRP in a document discussing cross-border payment solutions. A pro-XRP Twitter account shared screenshots of of the document, revealing the council's recognition of Ripple solution as a potential game changer in the industry. You know, and we've known for quite some time that that Ripple was, is on the Faster Payments Task Force one, as well as the Faster Payments Council. So there's two task forces in the United States that they're on. My apologies. I have to loosen up my watch a little bit. My watch squeezing my arm right now. Um, it says here. OK, and this is one of the best things about the XRP community. Like I said, they have some of the most brilliant um, detectives, researchers, Riddlers. On the planet. So this is from. It says. Uh, Rahit code 24694375. All right. My apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. And there's a document here. And then it says FPC document. The FPC's cross border payments work group. Established in 2020. With 30 diverse members. Had diligently explored ways to enhance. Faster cross border payments. In June 2021. It published a cross border. Faster payments white paper. We've gone over a few of their papers, so I, I, I'm supposing that there's something new here. The report outlined the requirements for faster and more efficient cross-border transactions, emphasizing speed, cost, ubiquity, transparency, and risk. Under the revised charter, FPC's work group investigated the potential impact of U.S. CBDCs on the adoption of real-time cross-border payments. It examined various solutions currently available in the market, with Ripple's solution garnering particular attention. This is nothing new. Same thing with the IMF. Same thing with the BIS. Same thing with Bank of England. Bank of America. I mean, it goes on and on and on with XRP. FPC spotlights uh, spotlights Ripple. Document noted that Ripple solution built on a blockchain ledger and utilizing XRP as a digital asset acts as a bridge between local fiat currencies. This solution enables financial institutions and payment providers worldwide to connect with a global network facilitating instant, transparent, and final final, uh, cross-border payments. Also, what that tells me and what I think about when I read that is there's going to be lots of money in flow. What does it do to that price? Trillions in flow. Remember, they're mostly working with the banks. Wholesale is the game, folks. What's it going to do to that price? You tell me. Muy lindo, mi gente. That price will skyrocket. I think they're afraid of that. I really, really, I think they're afraid. (laughs) The world will change. Because the XRP arm is different. We're sovereign. See, you have to understand, people that they march to the beat of their own drum, they're sovereigns. No one tells us what to do to put that kind of wealth in the hands of, of, of these individuals could change everything. Because we're unknown variables. We're, we're out here to do a lot of good, but sometimes that's not what entities want you to do. They don't. They want control. They want power. They don't typically like individuals that they can't control. So it says here, it also highlighted that Ripple solution eliminates the need for pre-funding destination accounts, more trillions. Or more trillions. All that locked up capital be flowing possibly through us. It lets them play. XRP, NFTs, whatever they want, smart contracts, staking possibly at some point. But I know they're going to go crazy. There's so many new mechanisms they can institute when, as the legacy system is now taken over, they're going to go. They're going to go crazy with staking. Come on, all across the board, they want to make money in every way possible. They just don't want the the regular people that are in now to make that capital. They don't want that. They want to keep them down. So as a lot of people have that mentality, they do. They feel like in order for them to be on top, they have to stuff somebody else down or stomp on somebody else. So now, it says reducing operational costs and unlocking capital for institutions. 
While Ripple solutions stood out, the FPC's document acknowledged other noteworthy options. It included Circle, really, right? Which offered, I know that they did, but listen, we have a Bricks Nation article coming up. Check that out. And that tells you why I just said that in the way that I said it. No, USDC isn't going to go that as far as XRP. It's not going to have the power of XRP. It's not going to do what XRP does, nor XLM, nor Algorand, so on and so forth. No, stable coins are almost done for because because they're pegged to fiat. You better peg that stable coin to gold. I mean, sure. And they, maybe they can make that switch. You better peg that stable coin to gold because fiat currency. I, I don't know how much longer fiat currency is going to have the position that it has, to be quite honest. And I could be completely wrong. But the rest of the world is moving to what looks like a commodity-based system, a gold-based system. Then what's fiat going to be worth? Who's going to want that? Anyway. All right, so we're going to leave that, <laughs> that one here. It's, in other words, everything's looking good for XRP. In other words, right? All right, so now I just wanted to point this a little bit out here, a little bit of stellar related news. I'm going to show you why it's related. I. I Okay, so now this article here, once again, is from you.today, all right? And it is titled, BlackRock Refiles for Bitcoin Spot ETF. Now, you're probably wondering, you're wondering to yourself, how does this relate to Stellar? I mean, besides BlackRock, the connection between BlackRock, Coinbase, Circle, USDC, and Stellar. I mean, besides that, right? Um, and they will definitely, I believe that they will definitely play in the future with XLM. But, but this is not about that. I'm going to read this little tidbit to you, and I'll show you the connection here. It says, BlackRock, the world's largest asset, asset manager, has resubmitted its application for a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund, ETF, as per the recent NASDAQ update. The financial giant has joined its rivals. Here we go. Here's the connection. Fidelity. That's not the connection. Wisdom tree. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me put a connection in it. Hold on now. I know that was, I like that. You remember that song? <laughs> I do. Oh, man. They used to have the best songs in the early 90s, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yes, they I know it. I know you're agreeing with me. I know. We're old school. We know. It. We had, the best was in the old school. I know you're saying, Mick, get to the connection. Okay. I'm sorry. My apologies. Wisdom Tree. Where do we hear that from? Oh, that's right. A couple days ago, Stellar announced that they're powering the app, which is called Prime. By Wisdom Tree. But wait a minute. Who is Wisdom Tree? That they're mentioning Wisdom Tree third after BlackRock and Fidelity. Then they say Wisdom Tree. Heck, they put Van Eck and Invesco Galaxy after Wisdom Tree in this sentence, which is significant. But let's get to it. Wisdom Tree. Stellar. Prime. Let's go here. I just typed into Google how much money does Wisdom Tree have. Here's it. It says with 80 ETFs, 80 of them. You think that Wisdom Tree, who's being powered by Stellar, we keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger, more powerful connections. Franklin Templeton, MoneyGram, Bonkhaus von der Haight, the, the Ukraine, Wisdom Tree, with 80 ETFs traded on the US market, 80 of them. You think XLM in the future is not 100% is, is not going to be one of those? You sure about that? I think I'm, I'm going to disagree a little bit. I could be wrong. With 80 ETFs traded on the U.S. markets, Wisdom Tree ETFs have a total assets under management of $64 billion. $64 billion. <laughs> We'll see how they're going to be using Stellar. But you think of a piece of, if we get a modicum, I haven't said that word in a long time. And we get a modicum of capital. Yeah, I did the little head shake. That's right. A modicum of capital flowing across Stellar. They're powering their app. Future. The future is open. The doorway is open. What's it going to do to that price? You tell me. We have all this big money utilizing Stellar and we're not even a, we're not even halfway done yet. We didn't even get regulatory clarity. We're not even playing just yet. $64 billion under management. And they're only going to grow. This is why they're getting into the bank coins early. That's the connection. 
64 billion dollar connection. This and look, they're, they're, they they chose Stellar to power their app, and so that means what? This is only the beginning of them using Stellar. Oh, this might be delicious in the end. Then what did I say before? I said things were going to expand. More and more companies keep coming in saying, "Hey, Stellar, let's build on you." When we when if XRP wins and when they win this SEC case, the bank coins get to play. I think Stellar's going to go absolutely insane with partnerships everywhere. There's no reason not to. You have a wisdom tree drooling over them. You have Franklin Templeton drooling over them. You have MoneyGram drooling over them. You have the White House calling them. I mean, it's one thing after another. What you're seeing right now is just in my humble opinion. It's no guarantees. I just speak for myself, not financial advice. But what you're seeing right now is they're they're just watering the seeds. The seed the, the plant hasn't begun to pop out of the ground just yet, but the seeds are in the soil. And the, you're seeing the water being poured on the seed. It's just a matter of time before that growth, before that plant sprouts. That's how I look at it. That's a heck of a connection, folks. And there, to even be mentioned with BlackRock. You know, listen, and, and you know why they don't, they, they, they don't talk about Vanguard? Because BlackRock and Vanguard should pretty much be one company. BlackRock, the biggest holders in Vanguard. Vanguard, the biggest holders in BlackRock. But right now, Vanguard has their hands full. They, they have their plate full right now. They do. Like, you know, they're even backing people like Gary Gensler and such. You know, so they're, they're playing in, in different areas right now. But later on, you know, not that it matters because, like I said, BlackRock is there. But Vanguard is definitely in play. So that might be interesting in the future, but they really don't have to as of right now. So, but that's why they're not mentioning Vanguard, right? They have other, they're, they're in other sectors right now. But BlackRock and then who, who are the other companies? Fidelity, then Wisdom Tree. All right. So now we're going to end off here. I have, a, I have another, a few more articles. I'll post those in the members only section. I just dropped a members only video. Check that one out. It's leading somewhere right into the next video I'm going to drop. But I'm going to end it off here with a little bit of gold news. All right. All right. So this this article here is from fxstreet.com and it's titled Gold Futures Further Gain on the Cards. And it begins as such. Open interest in gold futures markets rose for the second session in a row on Friday. This time by nearly 5,000 contracts, according to preliminary readings from CME Group. Volume instead maintained the choppy trade well in place and dropped by around 29.5 thousand contracts. Gold faces minor support near 1890. Friday's marked uptick in gold prices was on the back of rising open interest and a strong drop in volume. That said, while further gains appear on the cards in, in the very near term, a sustained bounce seems not favored. On the downside, the yellow metal, metal faces immediate support around 1890 region per troy ounce. Now, wait a minute. One of these articles, one of these articles is going to tell you a lot about the future. Banks, problems, catalyst for gold to skyrocket. I'm going to post these articles in the members only section so you can read them. All right. I'm telling you now, if certain things come to pass, no guarantees, but if certain things come to pass, gold will skyrocket. You saw it happen before. There's something big, big, possibly, possibly on the horizon. You decide for yourself after you read the article It's going to reiterate, not reiterate. It's going to confirm certain things. They're worried big time. Or else the people that's talking about this wouldn't be talking about this because they don't like to cover these things, but they have to. Or they will be derelict in their duty. So, everything's looking good right now, in my humble opinion. So, now that you have that information, what are you going to do with this? I smacked my microphone. My apologies. <laughs> so, until next time, let's get to the Monday.